to Parliament and have faced serious challenges and difficulties accessing Parliament just a few minutes ago. Yes. Because the whole of that gate facing County Hall is blockaded by multitudes of doctors clad in lab coats and other, and other attire. Honorable Speaker, and I've listened to my friend, the chairman of the committee, my very good friend, Honorable Pukosi. We have a problem at hand. First and foremost, I think as parliament, we need to address that issue, that blockade, because it's likely to cause problems. But secondly, this, this issue of doctors, the manner we are treating it, it is likely not to go away. So I think this house, more than any other institution, has got a cardinal duty to rise to the occasion. Where everything else fails, this house must come in to address the issue head on, regardless of who is on the wrong and who is on the right. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, we are now almost in the fourth week and there's, there are no signs of this strike abating. There are no signs at all of this strike abating. So these statements we are receiving here are not adding to anything. So something needs to be done. And that's something I heard the president say that the government is broke, is unable to pay, and therefore is unable to pay and therefore won't pay. Honorable Speaker, he also advised that Kenyans, including doctors, must now start to live within their means. Fair enough, Honorable Speaker. But even as we say so, what are we doing to ensure that these doctors leave the streets? They have now come to actually, to actually blockade parliament. You don't know what else will happen next, Honorable Speaker. As we speak, I am hearing, I'm hearing that other Kenyans are planning to join them. Honorable Speaker, it's no, it's, it's, there's no idle threat. Other Kenyans are actually planning now to join the doctors on the streets. Unless something happens and we can persuade the doctors to leave the streets and go back to the hospitals, Honorable Speaker, these statements will just remain statements. Honorable Speaker, this issue, you know, I was talking to my friend, Honorable Dr. Nikal, who is a veteran medical doctor. Honorable Speaker, I'm even surprised that those who are in charge of the, of the health ministry are unable to differentiate between medical students and intern doctors. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I have been advised. You know, I'm a layman when it comes to health issues. I have been advised and I've got every reason to believe the advice I've been, I've been given. Honorable Speaker, intern doctors are not just students. These are people who have done six years in university have actually graduated. As you know, doctors don't just graduate with one degree. They graduate with, with, they graduate with a degree on, uh, on medicine and also surgery. So it's a twin degree that they get after six hard years in campus. These are people who you cannot treat as any other ordinary interns we see in Why the not? job market here. So I suppose that unless something is done, there's a point of order on I. Yes, because. Uh, thank, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, when we talk about medical officer intern, it is true that you've been in the university for six years. But architects have also been in university for five years, uh, six years, engineers five years, and all of them after graduation. All of them graduate, then they can become interns, even engineers. So, so is the doctors. They have graduated, even lawyers graduate and they become interns. So internship is part of the training. Yeah? It is part of the training. And when you graduate as a doctor now that you are going as an intern, you are under supervision by a senior doctor. After you are one year of uh, training under the doctor, if you don't de-qualify, because there is another qualification, I have to sign you that you are now fit to treat any other person. If I feel you are not fit to treat any other person, then I'll, I'll make you repeat again until I'm satisfied 
that you can treat somebody confidently and professionally without supervision. So this is part of the training. And I don't want, I, I, I think we should not, and you see, we have the, those who are doing postgraduate, they are po postgraduate students, also called registrars. So there is nothing.